Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is my second ever video, so I'm super excited to get into it. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about some of the books that I've been reading recently. Um, when I actually recently graduated university and in university, I was an English major. So I love reading and I found that actually even after graduating, I've really sort of tried to broaden my horizons a lot and just read all the time and I mean now that we're in quarantine I have lots of time to be reading and don't have to be worrying about all the other school assignments and stuff so it's been really fun to kind of expand my repertoire and get a whole bunch of new books in. I guess I'll just get right into it. The book that I recently finished um, which has been long overdue, I wanted to read this book for ages but um, just recently got my hands on it and please excuse me if I pronounce any of the author's names wrong um, but this is Seven Feathers by Tanya Tulaga and it was such an amazing book um, really heart-wrenching and devastating um, and so well written though, so well researched um, I don't want to go too much into it because I don't want to spoil anything and I have a lot of books here so I don't want to make this video like three hours long but um, it looks in to the deaths of seven indigenous students um, in Thunder Bay um, specifically sort of at one high school I believe I think it was just the one high school but yeah it was definitely a must read I think for everyone. I think especially Canadians should read this book just because there's so many important issues brought up in here um, and I think a lot of times indigenous issues get swept under the rug and people don't know about them so that's why people aren't as you know active. Yeah I think if um, Canada as a whole knew more about indigenous issues they would be much more passionate about it and inclined to help so I think everyone could benefit from reading from this and it's just it was definitely really hard to get through not necessarily because the writing itself was difficult but just the content was so heavy that I felt I had to kind of read it in sections when normally I read a book usually all in one sitting but yeah definitely made me extremely emotional and I'm curious as to what else I can do to get involved. I did donate to the fund. There's a link at the back of the book um, to donate funds towards Indigenous education which I think is super important but but yes definitely a very important read. The next book that I've read recently, actually I read this a couple weeks ago and it is called My Dark Vanessa. I heard a ton of things on social media about this book and it was all over the chapters website, bestsellers, whatnot. So I thought that I would pick it up and the reviews for it are really good and but I kind of have mixed feelings about it. I don't know. I don't want to give too much away, but, and I think I should also warn this book deals with um, sexual violence in it, but which, and I, I was kind of confused as to why so many people liked it, honestly. Not that it was, like, I thought the book itself was well written and things, but for me, it just really seemed to glamorize sexual assault and like um, relationships with underage girls and things. And I know, and again, I don't want to spoil, but like towards the end, they sort of seem to try and flip that and remedy it. But throughout the majority of the book, it really, I don't know, I found a lot of things pretty concerning, but... I think it was definitely interesting to read and I wouldn't tell anyone not to read it but I think you just have to go into it with a critical critical mind and really analyze all of the stuff going on in it and try and form your own opinions but this one it was kind of iffy for me I thought it like yeah 
I don't know. Mm. Not the best in my <laughs> in my opinion. Um, and actually, this book, this next book, the best kind of people, is has sort of a similar theme to my dark Vanessa, but is taken from a totally different direction, I would say. And actually, I liked this one better because I thought that it really didn't glamorize the the sexual assault and sexual violence in it and it didn't go into as much detail about them as my dark Vanessa did which I feel like honestly can be kind of triggering for a lot of people but this one more focused on um, the accused family and kind of what um, it does to them and kind of the whole community as a whole and I thought it was really interesting and really well written um it might be a canadian author too which is cool <laughs> i like um to support canadian literature as much as i can um just because i feel like it doesn't a lot of times get widespread recognition for it but it's really good we have some great authors over here <laughs> but yes i think if i had to choose between my dark vanessa or this one i would definitely recommend this one over and it's by um zoe whittle oh and my dark vanessa was by kate elizabeth russell just in case you wanted to read them the next book that i've um finished in the last little while is um eleanor oliphant is completely fine by gail honeyman i actually picked this one up because it was in the reese witherspoon book club and I've read a couple other ones on her list too, and I thought that they were good. But so I kind of, I was excited about this one because it was definitely seemed by the description a much lighter book, which <laughs> I feel like lately I've been reading a lot of really heavy content, which I think is good and really important. But also I feel like there needs to be a balance. You need to give yourself a break. Have something happy every once in a while you know just so it doesn't get too depressing but um i liked this book i don't really have any negative thoughts towards it i just thought that it was kind of like done already i don't know the main character just seemed kind of like like a like a stereotypical eccentric woman or whatever how they're portrayed in literature and I just felt like the main character seemed really similar to me um, with um, Margaret Atwood's The Edible Woman and The Bell Jar. Like I kind of, it was sort of along those lines. Like it, I don't know if I would necessarily say it was as extreme as those books, but I definitely, as I was reading it, all I could think of was those two other books because it just like felt exactly the same. Like it wasn't a bad read, definitely it was it was fine, but it was completely fine. <laughs> but um yeah, I don't know. I just didn't think there was anything overly original about it, but it was it was a decent read. It was a quick read, you know. Got through it all right, but I think definitely um I would put a warning for anybody who struggled with mental health with this book. The next book that I've recently read is um, Small Game Hunting at the Local Coward Gun Club by Megan Gale Coles. And this is another Canadian book, so I'm excited about that. It was actually on the Canada Reads. I don't think that it won, but I know it was on there. And I guess it was a Scotiabank Giller Prize finalist too. But I did really enjoy this book. It took me a little bit to get into just because they go back and forth between a ton of different perspectives. So I think getting into the storyline took a little bit, but I thought that it was really well written. Um, I liked her writing style and kind of her voice in it. And she did a really good job at separating the characters too and having them having their own kind of narrative style which I thought was good and yeah I feel like it's just one of those books where it kind of starts off okay at the beginning but then just everything descends into chaos at the end I don't really want to give too much away but I would definitely recommend this book so the next book I read is called Brown Girl in the Ring by Nalo Hopkinson 
And this is also another Canadian book. Can you tell a theme? I've been reading a lot of Canadian literature lately. But um, it's a dystopian kind of magical book that's actually set in Toronto, like after the apocalypse and everything. And I thought it was really well done. I always love reading books that are set in Toronto because that's where I grew up or and I live. But yeah, and I feel like the dystopian ones just makes it so cool and so creepy. But yeah, this one was really good. I thought the plot was interesting and I really liked the use of magic in it too. And I think, I believe it's um, West Indian magic, it says. But yeah, I thought that this was really well done. Definitely it got kind of weird towards the end, but like a good a good weird and got a little bit uh, Definitely there's some violence in it, but um So I wouldn't recommend it to any kids or anything But yeah, I thought that this was really well done and supporting our I'm assuming she lives in, she lives in Toronto the author, but I don't know Yes, yeah, she does she does live in Toronto yeah, so the author lives in Toronto, so supporting our Toronto people. And yeah, it was definitely really good. Actually, this was a book that I believe I was supposed to read in for one of my classes. I don't remember which one, but it was just sort of slipped slip through the cracks. I mean, with English, there's so many that you have to read that you can't get to all of them. Or at least I didn't have time. But um, I'm really glad that I went back and read this. And actually, I think I'm gonna do a video where I go back and read a bunch of books that I was supposed to read in school that I didn't. Um, but that might take me a while, but stay tuned for that one. The next book that I read, I read this, um, I believe it was actually close to Thanksgiving, so it was a little while ago, because um, Canadian Thanksgiving is in October. But um, it's Medicine Walk by Richard Wagamese. And um, this book was so good. It was so heartbreaking. Like I cried towards the end and it takes a lot to get me to cry for books. I feel like TV shows, I'll cry in like two seconds, but books, I don't know. I feel like it takes a lot to actually get like that emotion out in me, but this book was just so well written, so heartbreaking. Um, it's about, I don't want to give too much away, but it's about um, a boy who um, goes to visit his estranged, estranged, <laughs> I don't know how to say that, um, his father who he doesn't really have a relationship, um, and just through things like alcoholism and all that kind of stuff, um, and he finds out I feel like this is okay to say. He finds out his father is dying and they go on this basically trek um, so that um, his father can be buried at like this spot. But yeah, so it's basically about them. I don't know if I want to say reconciling their relationship because I don't think that they, there is a reconciliation, but I think it more just it's interesting to kind of see the father side of the story and whatnot and see them kind of spending time together. Um, this book is really good. Actually, um, Richard Wagamese is one of my favorite indigenous authors. Um, the first book that I read by him was Keeper and Me, which is one of my favorite books. So I had high expectations of this one after that because this is only the second book I've read of his. Um, but it definitely lived up to that. I think I still like to keep her in me better, but this one was really good also. And actually, I think the last book that he published, um, I th actually, it was after his death, so he didn't even get to finish it, and was Starlight, which is sort of like a sequel to this. Like, it has the same main character, but I, must, I think it's years in the future, so I really want to read that one. I think I put it on my Christmas list, so... We'll see how it goes, but yes, I think that's definitely on my list. Next is Starlight, because I really want to have more of these characters. They were just so well written. Um, another book that I've read recently is called 
Girl, Woman, Other, and it's by Bernadine Evaristo. Evaristo, I think, yes. And this book was really good. It was super long. I don't know if you can tell how thick that is, but it was definitely a massive book. <laughs> Um, but I think there is just so much in this book that I can't even get into all the details But it was just so well written. It talks about so many important issues um, like Race, gender, sexuality I think it really the main thing about this book I think is it explores womanhood I would say and in particularly um, black womanhood because it, it focuses on black women Again, I think this one was sort of similar to the the Cole book. Um, it definitely took a while to get into, again, because it kind of goes back and forth between characters. And it's definitely a slow burn, like you can see how many pages it is. But yeah, it was just so well done. There was one thing in the book that was kind of like, mm, that's concerning. But... Um, yeah, just very, very moving, I thought, and so important, especially with everything going on today. I thought it was really witty, a lot of heart in it, I thought, and you can just tell how much care went into writing it. It like went as you're reading it, just the way that she writes, I feel like is so interesting. So I think the last book I'm going to talk about today is um, Trickster Drift by Eden Robinson. Um, this is actually the second book in the Trickster series. The first one was Son of a Trickster and it was so good. I read it really fast and I didn't actually at the time know that it was a series. So I only had the first book and I got to the end and I was like, wait, what? But <laughs> um, this is also really good too. I thought that it definitely um, was a good sequel. Um, I th One of my favorite genres is um, indigenous sci-fi futurism kind of vibes and I feel like this book is really cool. Um, it has a lot of magic and supernatural and all that kind of stuff in it. Um, and I'm super excited because they made a TV show um, based on the Trickster series, so, um, I've only gone a few episodes in, but so far it's pretty good, but to me it seemed, like, the TV show seems pretty different from the books, which I don't know how I feel about yet, but we'll see if they can kind of connect it back a little, I don't know, I feel like they just changed a lot of little details in it, but... Who knows? I mean, I don't think that she wrote the TV script. I think she was involved in the TV show, but um, I think they had a different writer, so maybe they changed things for a reason. But yeah, this is also a great one. But if you haven't read Son of a Trickster, read that one first, <laughs> then pick up this one. And I've heard the third one is going to come out soon. I know that she's writing it. I don't know exactly what the timeline is for that, but it will definitely be in my cart as soon as it comes out because <laughs> I want to know what happens in the end. Well, I feel like there were so many books that I could have included in this, but I feel like they're, I don't want it to be like three hours long, but um, I think I'm going to do lots more book videos because I love to read and I've been reading a lot so I have lots of different books to talk about. <laughs> but um, actually I just started a book yesterday, um, I think it's called Never Let Me Go. Um, so I will keep you updated on how that goes. Um, and also for the last couple months I've been posting book recommendations on my Instagram too. So. Um, if you're looking for even more books, um, I have lots more over there. So if you have any book recommendations for me, leave them in the comments. I'm always looking for new stuff. Um, my Christmas list was pretty much exclusively books this year, so I think I'll be getting a few more in. And yeah, I have lots of, lots of video ideas surrounding books, so I think that's going to be a big part of what my channel will be. But yeah, anyways, thanks for watching and I hope to see you back here soon for more content.